everybody. Welcome to EduMesh Sweet and Talk number 20. Can you believe that it is number 20? Oh my goodness. Can't even believe that. So welcome and um, happy daylight savings time. So we all got to fall back an hour. So that is just awesome. Um, tonight we are going to be chatting about the great homework debate. So homework versus no homework. Please sh be sure to follow along with us on the Google Hangout. Uh, bit.ly forward slash tweet talk 20 as well as the Twitter with the hashtag edumatch so if you want a back channel we'll be watching the Twitter hashtag we will also um, be looking for the Q&A so if you have a question then feel free to pop it into Q&A so speaking of edumatch with our hashtag edumatch then if you check out our website at edumatch.education then uh, you can sign up to be a featured person of the day and we can get your information and that way we can add you to our Voxer group and to our uh, to our blog role so that would be awesome so um, tonight's topic we're going to be doing a great homework debate encouraging um, encouraging debate amongst everyone on the panel to see whether or not homework is a good thing so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our wonderful moderator for tonight Leslie Thank you, Sarah. Um, glad to be joining you all again this week, and I am curious to see what other people have to say about yes homework or no homework. Before we get started, I'd like our panelists to introduce themselves. Just tell who you are and what it is that you do at your job. So we will get started with Nicole, please. Hello, my name is Nicole. I am a math and science coach in Lancaster ISD, right outside of Dallas, Texas. Shana? I'm Shana White from Gwinnett County, which is in Metro Atlanta, and I am a middle school technology coordinator. Thank you. Um, Sarah, can you introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Thomas, and I am a high school technology education teacher hailing from Virginia, working in the great state of Maryland. Thank you. I am Leslie Fagan. I'm an instructional technology coach in a small suburban school district south of Atlanta. As I mentioned earlier, our topic tonight is whether or not teachers should assign homework as a student of the 70s and 80s we had homework pretty much every night and as a teacher I gave my students homework but I'm curious to know how other people feel about it because I've heard some good conversation for it and against it and I'd like to spark some debate tonight as to whether or not teachers and if you're also a parent how do you feel about teachers giving homework and what's the rationale behind it so how about we start with the pro side um, if you are in favor of assigning students homework, would you like to speak right now, Shana, Nicole, or Sarah? I would say that I'm for homework, <laughs> but I wouldn't say that I'm against homework. Um, I think it's the type of homework assigned. Um, I think it has to be purposeful. Um, it has to be meaningful. I always think, um, or even when I when I evaluate homework, because I, I look at plans for the teachers on my campus, you know, is it aligned with what the students did in class? Like, what's the purpose? You know, sometimes you'll see kids get a page, 20, 20, 25 problems of the same thing. Like, do you not know that they understand that after problem number five? Um, or is there a better way for them to apply those skills, um, whether it be um, some type of performance that they can do where they can kind of you know maybe like a, a, a project they can do rather than drill and kill I think it's just the the type of homework I wouldn't say I'm for or against okay I can totally agree with that I remember as a child um, in my English classes or you know in elementary school we would have lots of sections on you know identifying the noun identifying the verb and I was an English teacher and I kinda sorta started my career doing the same thing so I wanted to make sure my students knew the parts of speech that's not exactly purposeful like you said but at the same time as an English teacher how do you get around not assigning a research paper as homework that's you know one of my questions um, people have said you know the children should be able to do that all the time in class well, you can't do a research paper without ignoring everything else. Um, anybody else have anything to say about 
making sure that homework is purposeful or whether or not it should be assigned. All right, I guess I'm going to piggyback on what she said um, because I came from teaching English language arts for like four or five years. Um, I'm just recently going moving to high school and moving to a different content area and um, the way that we kind of got around that homework issue was that um, there was a lot of time to do it in class because we implemented the flipped learning um, method where you know I pre-recorded the video lessons and had the students watch them in the evenings and they came to class ready to work and of course there's different challenges to equity and stuff like that when you think about flipped instruction um, but there's other ways to um, to kind of accommodate for that and meet uh, learners where they are so I'll drop a link to that on the edumatch hashtag in just a moment but just wanted to throw in my two cents on that did you have any pushback from the parents about doing that I did actually um, because parents typically you know when they went to school then homework was given like you said um, on a fairly frequent basis so they were kinda used to that so I had to really explain for some people um, exactly what we were trying to accomplish and then um, once they kinda understood then it was uh, it was better received I think that would be a concern with a lot of people um, trying to do the flipped classroom of that came about probably about the time that I was getting ready to make the transition into being an instructional tech coach and I'm not sure how or if I would have been able to implement it. Another thing and um, as an English teacher we did summer reading and we had a lot of parents who would say my child's not doing that during the summertime because school is out and they just would not. I kinda sorta felt like you know reading should not be considered homework. Do you all have you know comments about whether or not children should at least read during the summertime? I have some comments to go back to your first statement because I'm anti-homework. Um, I'm speaking from a parent perspective of a first grader and also from leaving the classroom, been there for 11 years. Um, I never gave my students homework. Um, I always afforded them enough time in class to show me mastery of the content um, and I taught one of those connections classes, but I took what I taught in health very seriously. Um, and I taught actually more health classes than I did PE. And a lot of times our assignments were always project based. They were working in groups, collaboratively, doing whatever. Um, and I felt that that time was best suited not to be done at home um, because I wanted to teach not only health content but also real world skills. Um, how can you work with somebody that maybe you don't like? Um, how do you develop critical thinking skills? You don't necessarily, you're not able to do that sometimes with homework, especially that kill and drill stuff. Um, and so I didn't feel the need for homework. I never assigned homework. And literally every time I would start my first day chat, kids would jump up and cheer when I said, you will never have homework for me. And I mean the kids would jump up, and this is middle school, they would jump up and cheer because they knew this was one less class they had to worry about lugging a book home, I'm going to have to do this worksheet, X, Y, and Z. Um, so I would say personally I'm against homework, um, and then I'm seeing it from a different perspective as a parent now. Um, but as a teacher, I'm against it. I think reading is a completely separate entity, and I don't include that in homework. Um, I'm really purposeful in making sure my daughter and my son read on a regular basis. Um, but I exclude reading from homework. Homework to me is stuff sent home to complete um, that's in some cases a tedious or in some cases a mundane task um, that was not done while you were in the school building. As the parent of a first grader, do you face the challenge of your daughter may spend an hour or so, two hours doing homework and is she frustrated? That's, that's what I hear a lot of my friends saying, that their children come home and their kids are not having a chance to be a kid. Is that kind of how you feel? Um, yes, I'm actually very, this conversation came up this week. Um, I think Sarah was in the Twitter conversation as well. I was talking to Alice Keeler and a couple other people. I think was talking to a couple people in my PLN. Um, I was talking to Franz Davis and others about how to address this. Um, because my daughter's in first grade. She currently is reading on a fourth grade level. Her math is on a second grade level. And for them, rigor is giving her more work. So they send her home not only with the first grade math problems that the other kids are having to do, but she also has to do her second grade math problems as well. And I was sitting there with her and she gets so frustrated because she's like, 
why am I doing this? Like, what is the purpose of this? Why am I doing this? And it's hard for me to give her an answer as to why. My husband is big on her not being defiant, and we want to follow the rules. Um, but then I remember Alice Keeler said something about you don't want to lead somebody to kind of blind compliance, to just do stuff, to just do it. Um, because she's not getting any benefits from it. It's just completing a worksheet, writing your number, stuff that she doesn't see a purpose for. Um, and so I actually went to the teacher, and I'm actually going to meet with the teacher tomorrow to just say, is there another way that we can accomplish this task? Can she show you mastery of the content? She loves to play Minecraft. Um, she loves to do project-based stuff, like she builds stuff on a cardboard. Is there another way that she can demonstrate to you that she understands what she needs to master to finish first grade or to master second grade math in her case? And I'm waiting for a response. And I think they were surprised that I mentioned this because I'm a teacher and I'm coming from a teacher background. They think that homework is okay. And I'm like, it actually is not. Not for a first grader because she can't enjoy when she comes home. She thinks, oh my gosh, I have to do homework. Or she has a test every single week. And she's like, I don't understand why. And it's like, I can't give her a good answer. And that part frustrates me as a parent to say, you know what, I can't really give you the why because I really don't know the why myself. Very good point. Um, as a high school teacher, I would see where my kids used to have a love of doing something, and then we would kill that. We don't want to do that that early. In the, well, actually, we don't want to do it at all. But I think when you have a younger student and they don't understand why, they we can't make them understand. We have some good comments coming from our Twitter chat. And Zena made the um, comment, Zena Brown, thank you, that she likes to say, instead of using the term homework, that she likes school to um, home to school connection. And I like that too. So it's kind of like, I guess, when I'm at home in the evening doing work related to my job, I'm not necessarily doing homework, but I'm trying to stay abreast of what's going on in the world of technology trying to keep up with what's going on at Twitter and what you all are saying. Um, Nicole, do you have children in school? I do. Yes, I have I have three children. They're all in public school. And I was actually, my, my oldest is 11. He's in sixth grade. He just started having homework last year in fifth grade. He was in Montessori um, pre-K through fourth grade. So no homework until fifth grade. And... Um, <laughs> Um, he was. It was. It was really hard for him. Um, and just listening to um, what Shana was saying, you know, as long as the homework is purposeful, and I can see that he's actually getting something out of it, um, I just cringe when she said her daughter was, you know, really bright. So they really see that as more rigor is not more. It's not more work. But, I mean, a student like that should be given, you know, menus and given choices. And, you know, because it's obvious that she doesn't need to write her letters. She doesn't need to, you know, write write her numbers. But, yeah, I have – and Paul, that's that's one thing. Um, he doesn't – I don't really see him with irrelevant homework, um, kind of knowing where he is, where, where, where it relates to um, math and reading, because that's what, where most of his homework comes from. I feel like he needs the practice. And um, the practice that he's getting is relevant to him. But we have had times where the homework, I just did not see where, you know, or maybe the practice was not relevant. And I went and spoke to the teacher, and they could kind of showed me data. But I really haven't had the issue where he's kind of bogged down with homework. Okay. I'm still straddling the fence, and I can't decide how I feel. I don't have any children in school, but after, you know, being in the classroom and being a student, it's kind of like, well, actually, I don't, I hate to say that I don't know, but I still don't know. Um, Sarah, in the conversations that you all have had before about, because I know that you and Alice and Shane, I think, had a conversation going on on Twitter. Can you see where we, how do we get the teachers to either make the homework more meaningful or how do we, I don't, I'm, actually not articulating very well, but what can we as, I'm not going to call myself a leader, but somebody out there, how do we get teachers to either get more meaningful or stop with the useless homework? I think that's probably what I'm trying to say. 
That is a great question. Um, and I just have to say that the Twitter debate going on right now is just fire. Like everybody is just so passionate about this, and I'm 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 lurking on the Twitter debate like crazy. Um, but I think that Cody had a very great idea that he shared on Twitter, saying, uh, "Currently trying a new thing, optional homework based on assessment results." And I feel that 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 would probably be something really good to do um, because, you know, you have um, the best of both worlds. Some parents really want that extra stuff to be able to support their, their students. They want to know, like, they want to have that homeschool connection as Zena was talking about. But at the same time, um, if, it's, if it's not if it's optional, then I think that, that that would be the best of both worlds, like giving the parents um, that that information to help support their students and keep them on task or keep them on board with what they're learning um, in school. But at the same time, you you run into challenges as uh, let me see as Cody was saying also that uh, depending on what the material is and uh, different different things going on in the students' lives. Like we really only have control of the four walls of our schools, so we can't mandate that homework be done at home and that if you don't do it then it counts against your grade. Um, so Cody was saying that he teaches conceptual physics in ninth grade and parents can't often help so students are left frustrated, floundering, and the grade dropping. Um, and Stefan was saying that it still needs to be made clear is homework benefiting students or do our beliefs that students must do uh, the related subject matter at home. So. Um, and one more from Twitter. Uh, Brian was saying that homework could have a choice a choice board for students. So uh, there's there's that. There's a lot going on in our Q and A as well. I know that Michelle um, left some comments as well, but I will go ahead and uh, pass the mic on for right now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to circle back and get some of those in as well. Can I just interject? Uh, somebody, I was going on the Twitter chat while you were talking as well. And the big thing that some people are saying that are pro-homework is that it teaches responsibility. And a lot of people don't agree with that, and I'm one that does not agree with that. Um, I think you create a lot more issues when you make homework mandated. Um, and like a couple people mentioned, you cause anxiety for some parents. Some parents are not equipped to assist their kids with the homework, and so you have people that just feel discombobulated. They're sitting in a room with their child who's frustrated because they don't get it, but the parent doesn't get it either. Um, there's a lot of times, like I said, I've shown my husband my daughter's math work, and the math that they teach now is completely different than the way we learned when we were in school. And he's like, "This doesn't even make sense to me." He's like, "What am I? What am I supposed to tell her to pick?" You know what I mean? Like that, he's trying to find the easy way out, and that's what you're gonna get. And the kids are not learning. You're just trying to find a way to get it done. And when you put that in the process, you're in no way teaching kids responsibility. You're actually kind of in another way, teaching them a back way of, of being irresponsible to sit there and say, what's the easiest way out? How can I get out of this situation? The easiest way is just to fill in whatever they've asked them to fill it in and just turn it in. Um, and so I think when you're using homework to teach responsibly, especially for younger kids, it's, that's the wrong thing. And I think Rafan said something perfectly. She's like, I have a job that I do very well all day, and I'm very responsible, and I don't have any homework. So if you think you're teaching responsibility with homework, that's just, to me, an argument that you got to throw out the window because I don't think that it does whatsoever. And when you see, when I see the frustration in a, a six-year-old's eyes, when I look at her and I'm like, this is not teaching her anything but to be frustrated. Um, and I just don't like that feeling. And so for me as a parent, I have to enact some of my parental power and say, what can we do to make you happy as a teacher as far as showing you that my daughter is meeting your needs and the content that you're trying to teach, but then also meet my child's needs. She's only six. I mean, let's get that in the mind frame that she's only six. She's not expected to sit there and sit at a desk for an hour and a half after she's been at school for another six and a half hours and produce a worksheet to turn into you. I just think that that's unfair. I can definitely agree with that with a six-year-old um, doing work just for the sake of, of doing work. I'm going to um, refer to a couple of the comments that I see. Michelle Hayes is suggesting, and I, I kind of agree with this, that we need to, our kids are doing things when they get out of school, they're watching um, Scandal and Empire and, and things that they should not be watching probably, and that's just my opinion. We need to fill the void of what it is that they're, the extra time that they have at home, and she's suggesting that doing some school stuff can help fill that void. Um, so that's a point that was brought out in the Twitter chat. And some other people have said, you know, like we mentioned, that 
homework is just really not necessary. My question to everybody, and we are going to wrap this up because I think we're over the time, how do we get the word out to people? And I do like what was suggested that the children have options. How do we get the word out um, to other teachers, give the children options, and see where we go from there to make some progress towards you know, student achievement and having less stress on the parents. I couldn't do homework with a kid now if I had to because I don't understand the Common Core standards, but that's, you know, a conversation for another day. So what I'd like to do is give everybody a couple of seconds to wrap up their opinion and then we will turn things back over to Sarah. So, Nicole, would you like to wrap it up? Sure. Um, I think it all goes back to just knowing your standards. Um, in Texas, we don't use Common Core, but um, just making sure that you know what it is that you know students should know and be able to do at the end of that lesson. Homework should be a, a meaningful, fast, um, engaging way for students to practice you know the things that you've taught them. If it's not meaningful, if you can't find a way to meaningful give them practice at home, then I just don't think that you should do it. Shana, um, closing words. Um, as a parent, I would just say to be involved. Um, for me, having that conversation with my child's teacher and saying, are there other ways that we can meet your needs as far as homework? Um, my child doesn't learn this way. She doesn't learn by doing worksheets. She learns by creating. Um, so can she create projects, whatever, to show the same master that she would if you made her fill out this worksheet that you send home every week? So I say parents being involved in the conversation and also offer alternatives um, that meet the teacher's need. Not necessarily being defiant, but all for alternatives that shows the teachers that your child has mastered whatever they need to master without it causing anxiety or ruckus in your home. Okay, I like that. And my closing comments, um, I've heard some good arguments on both sides. I think that perhaps one of the things that we can do if we're parents or teachers, encourage our students and our children to get involved in some extracurriculars, some sports, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, 4-H, things like that, and that will reinforce what they're learning in class, and it's not really so much homework because they're doing things that's going to teach them responsibility, lifelong skills, character building, teamwork, and the things that we're trying to do in the classroom. So I don't know, maybe that's what I'll, I'll push more with my teachers, and what I'd like to do now is turn it back over to Sarah so that she can wrap up our conversation for the evening, and I do want to thank the panelists tonight. This has been a good conversation, so thank you very much. All right, thank you all so much for participating in that. wanted to definitely thank everyone uh, who's on panel tonight. Thank you, Leslie, for moderating it. Thank you to everyone in our Q&A. Like, that was, that was full tonight, so sorry to Cameron and to Tamara. Um, we didn't get to your questions, but thank you for sharing them, and hopefully people will be able to see them and reflect on them um, as, as we progress. Uh, thank you to everyone who is following along on the hashtag. This chat will be storified, and this actual Google Hangout on air will be stripped of the video, and just the audio will be placed on the iTunes um, on the iTunes uh, store thing, <laughs> the the playlist for the uh, for the podcast. So come back next week. We are going to be talking with uh, two moderators, with uh, Dorian and with Valerie, about the parent teacher balance. So when do you have on the hat to be an educator? When do you have on the hat to be a teacher? Or I'm sorry, a parent. And um, how do you know when to take one off, put the other one on. So if you're interested in being a panelist for that one or even just watching, um, the link is bit.ly forward slash tweet talk 2121. All right, so anyone can be a panelist. Just leave a comment on the Google Hangout page and um, check us out at bit.ly forward slash edumatchpodcast. So everybody have a great evening and thank you all so much.